you mentioned dog fart. Mm-hmm. So obviously I feel like we can't have this discussion without talking about one of these incredibly important conversations that's come up in the adult industry right now, which is racism and porn. Okay. And I know that you've been heavily involved in those conversations. I, I went to that XBiz town hall okay. um, meeting and, and where you and a bunch of other black performers spoke about your experience with that yeah. in the industry. So can you tell me from your own perspective what it's been like for you? And do you agree with the idea that companies like Dogfart and Blacked should be canceled? Um, off back, I don't believe either of those companies should be canceled. I think without, without Dogfart specifically, you want to see half of the male talents that you love and learn about in this industry thus far. Black came about maybe, what, five, 2016? So, um, so like, they're relatively new. And, you know, they have brought in some black um, male talents that you that you know, the Jason Loves, um, and they, they've been good people. But um, without those companies, you know, you wouldn't have a real source of where people could film their content. Um when it comes to racism and porn, I always feel like it's been a reflective of America. Like um, the products that we put out has always been um, based on what sells. And, you know, I feel that from the time that I started with Dog Fart to the time that it is today, the company has just completely changed from the culture that they once was. And, and they, they adapt to the culture that is today. And with Black, you know, 2016, the name was cool. 2020 is not anymore. I feel that that comes more so with the younger generation and, like, what they don't like to hear or what they don't like to see. Um, But I feel like people from my generation and a little bit older are a little bit more okay with those words. It's not as offensive because, you know, we've seen worse. Um... My my personal experience with racism and porn was it started with the IR term. And when I came in as a publicist, I had to learn the definition of what IR meant. And so when people used to say IR, you know, I had to figure out quite quickly that they was talking about black people. And right. Inter- interracial for those. So sometimes I have to remember that my listeners don't aren't that involved in the porn industry. So I have to like explain terms to people just to be clear. So what he means is interracial. And can you explain exactly what that means? Because it doesn't mean necessarily what people think it means. You know, you would, you would hop in this industry and when you hear the word interracial, you would think that it just meant interracial as in like um, your ethnicity versus my ethnicity. And that's what it is. But no, in this industry, it specifically mean black male or female. And more so than none, it mostly mean black male. So the hype around IR is what was like culture shock to me of like how much it meant to the individual at the time. You know, people would put off doing IR for years, um, prolonging their career or with the hopes of prolonging their career. Um, I think in today's market, you know, with OnlyFans and other stuff like that, girls don't necessarily have to wait to prolong their career anymore. I think OnlyFans and their platforms help prolong their career. And so like IR is not as, um, it's not as taboo to perform right away as it was back in the days because, you know, you don't have to hold off all your options anymore. Mm-hmm. And so, um, end of the day, you know, I feel that IR always been a smokescreen for the word black male and black female. And I just feel like if y'all just be honest with what y'all talking about, at least we could be a little bit more clear and transparent on what we mean. Um, If I had to think about getting rid of the word IR in terms of marketing, I don't feel that it's necessary. I feel that's how people find their scenes. Um, IR is keywords to help you find something that you're looking for. Everybody do have sexual preferences on what ethnicity they want to see together, who they want to watch have sex, and um, and what they like to see. 
Um, when it comes to IR and adult industry, I just feel like we need to get rid of that smoke screen and just be transparent. Um, the model, like if it comes from an agency level, I feel like the paperwork they give the models in the beginning shouldn't have interracial on there and that um, they should just decide if they want to work with that person or not based off of doing their research on who the male talent is. And right. So it shouldn't be like you have a list of what you won't will or won't do anal double penetration right. IR like IR should be removed from that. And then people can be presented with, you know, a certain performer. Do you want to work with this guy? And right. they can say yes or no based on like whatever their preferences are. But it doesn't have to be like I won't do IR. I won't work with black people. Right. It's yeah, I get you. OK. It becomes a pretext to people's beliefs. So. Right. Like for an agent that don't think that they're um, that they don't think there's any harm by having interracial on their model um, sheet to figure out what the model is into or not, it's, it gives a pretext to somebody belief before they even thought of it. So right. when people get into the industry and think of having sex, they just thinking of having sex. As soon as you present your skin color and be like, "Yo, would you do an IR scene?" and then it, it becomes that pretext of like, okay, what do you mean by IR? And then the agent got to explain, well, IR is black males. And then it becomes a belief question. It's like, well, what do my beliefs tell me? Should I work with this? Or is, is it beneficial to work with a black guy? Or is it beneficial to not work with a black guy? And choosing one or the other is upholding whatever beliefs that person have. But that belief wouldn't even come into question if that question was never there. And, yeah. And so, you know, and then when you couple that with the suggestion that you could charge more, you know, have your IR rate to charge more with a black man, that's like takes it to a whole other level. Absolutely. Absolutely. It, it just kind of it kind of continues to uphold the belief that um, black skin is something um, less or more than the other skin types. Mm-hmm. And everybody should just be on an equal playing field and you choose based off of who you want to work with and who you don't. Right. So what do you think that the adult industry could do to either make IR more palatable to people who still want to, you know, search for that, that genre Um, or like, like what, I don't know what, what steps can the adult industry take to level the playing field and to make, this a more fair, less racist industry? Well, you know, I guess you could say less racist is is appropriate because um, what I don't want to fall into is the trap of calling everything racist because there are a lot of people that um, aren't in a position of power to change the things how we would like to, but there are people that are there that are trying to make sure we all get equal chances. So I do work with a bunch of directors who um, do try to give me my fair shot and do try to sandwich me into things that um, people would have to double look to see if it's considered IR material or not. But, um, but I just don't want to get caught up saying everything about the industry is racist. There are, there's obviously things that could make it, um, less prejudice than what it is today. But a couple of those things are understanding that um, what you're saying is what you're saying. Like black and white is interracial. And when it comes to the interracial market, people look for black and white instead of other races that are together. Right. So um, I think if if the term interracial is that um, negative to the point where you you feel like you got to get rid of it to feel better, then I feel that it just needs to be rebranded. Because mm-hmm. the word the word itself is a trigger word because it, it's just triggering people for what it really means. But the word itself is, actu- is in actuality of what it is. So um, I think a quick rebranding of the word will probably help ease some people's conscience. Like, I don't have an issue with the word IR. I don't have an issue with BBC. Um, but um, but I do understand that, you know, some of these words are triggering to some and that sometimes they do need to be rebranded to, like, fit the culture of what it is today, you know? Like, mm-hmm. like 
<laughs> like when you try to argue the NAACP and people always think of like the first word is um, or the last two words of color people and people wanted to rebrand that and be like, yo, we don't want to no longer call ourselves color people. But I mean, it's like history is its history. It's just that sometimes stuff needs to be rebranded to become better on ease of people conscious when they want to support it. Right. 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 Okay. Yeah. This is all, uh, this is, this is, I, I love that, you know, everybody's kind of got a different perspective on this, you know, different African American performers have different perspectives on, you know, how to change the industry. And, um, and I think it's just something important for all of us to listen to and, and see just how we can make it a fairer place for everybody. Yes. You know, Absolutely. So I appreciate your perspective. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss a single episode and go check out all the other videos. I film every single one of my podcasts. And if you want to listen to the audio version, I'm on iTunes and all the other podcast platforms. Visit hollyrandallunfiltered.com to find out more.